fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. In the years following the gold rush, many men in California rose to fabulous heights of wealth and power. One of these was Arnold Gerson, whose wealth reached out to develop the vast resources of the Far West. Unlike the thousands of gold seekers, adventurers, and parasites who sought to grab only what they could hold in their hands, Arnold Gerson was in the Far West to stay. Gerson saw the growing influx of disreputable element and knew that they could and would destroy what he and others like him had wrested from this land of promise. He decided to strike at the heart, the infamous Barbary Coast. In an effort to stamp out the viciousness, Gerson sought for and found the Lone Ranger. This masked rider of mystery, though reluctant to leave the plains and mountains of the cattle country, answered the call and soon found himself fighting a new type of criminal in the Barbary Coast. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides oh, again. Silver! Faster, boy, faster! I will Silver! Boy! The most vicious and deadly enemy ever to invade the United States landed an army at San Francisco just before the turn of the century. It was an army with greater striking power and more destructiveness than all the military campaigns of history. A well-organized and highly efficient legion of death. Its battle chargers and soldiers numbered millions. In reality, the battle chargers were rats. The soldiers, fleas. And their poison, a disease that has killed more men than all the wars since time began. Bubonic plague. It had its beginning on the waterfronts of Yokohama, Bombay, Batavia, Singapore, and a hundred different ports of call for ships that were sailing west. And at each port, the sound of the embarking army was always the same, the swift scuttling feet of small curved claws. Slinking along docksides, under wharves, and climbing mooring hawsers, thousands upon thousands of beady black eyes peering intently through the darkness of a ship's hold. This was the army of invasion. But San Francisco and Chinatown knew nothing about it. And in the back room of a Barbary Coast cafe called Little Casino... Seen anything of Mac Barber around here? Mac Barber? Well, how would I see him? He shipped out for the Orient over six months ago. And he's shipping back. Out of dock on the flood tide, either tonight or sometime tomorrow. You ever hear of Quan Kung? Quan Kung? Listen, Bart, all them Chinese names sound the same to me. They're just like the Chinamen that wear them. They're all alike. Quan Kung is no Chinaman. She's a Chinese goddess. <laughs> the goddess of mercy. What's the idea? Now, tomorrow night, there's going to be a big to-do up in the Chinatown. They call it the Feast of the Lanterns. All the Chinese dress up in fancy clothes with masks and have a parade. I don't get it. They carry a lot of them idols. They call them gods and goddesses in the parade. Most of them are pretty fancy stuff made out of gold, pure gold. 
Juan Kung is the most valuable. Ah, I see. You rush the parade, grab that gold no, idol, and then... have the law on our trail in five minutes. Now, the way I've got it figured is to get the goddess of mercy before she joins the parade. Well, how? There's an old goat who takes care of it. He lives on DuPont Street. His name is Tai Shung. You mean I to... ain't got it all worked out yet. But the minute Mac comes ashore, we'll move. In the forecastle of a clipper ship approaching the Golden Gate, a sleepless sailor tossed in his narrow bunk. Hey. hey What's wrong with you up there? Hey. Settle down and go to sleep. That, that's you, Mac? Who else do you think would be in the bunk below you? Queen of Sheba? <laughs> I, I can't sleep. The noise keeps me awake. Yeah, you're daft. What noise? I don't know what it is. But all you have to do is keep quiet for a second and you'll hear it. Uh. Listen. Sure, I hear it. You mean to say that's what's keeping you awake? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you dumb swab, that's nothing but rats. Common bilge rats. I've been sailing for two years, and I've never heard rats make that much noise before. Listen, kid, I've been sailing the seven seas for over 20 years. Rats running through the bulkheads is a real sailor's lullaby. <laughs> You'll learn to love it. I don't think I'll ever... <clears throat> now what's wrong? I don't know. Something bit me. Must have been a mosquito. Mosquito? You're finding mosquitoes on the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> That's a flea. Kid, you've got a lot to learn. Say, ever been in Frisco before? No. When we dock tomorrow, I'll show you around. A friend of mine owns a cafe down on Barbary Coast. It's called the Little Casino. We'll drop in there first and have a drink. While in the library of Arnold Gerson's home on Knob Hill, the Lone Ranger was bidding the banker goodbye. When are you leaving tonight? Oh, not until day after tomorrow. Tato and I have a social obligation to fulfill before we leave San Francisco. Social obligation? I thought you shied away from that type of thing. Well, ordinarily I do. But Tai Shar Shong has invited us to attend the Feast of the Lanterns in Chinatown tomorrow night. Hmm. Tai Shar Shong, who's he? One of the finest men I've ever known. Well, that's so. I don't know much about the Chinese here in the city. Never cared much for foreigners. Tai Shua Shung isn't a foreigner. He's an honest, upright, law-abiding Chinese-American. A naturalized citizen. Just as American as we are. Well, maybe so. Personally, I agree with Rudyard Kipling. You know, east is east and west is west. You ought to meet Tai Shua Shung. His philosophy is better than Mr. Kipling's poetry. Well, if there's nothing more, I... Oh, wait, I just remembered something. A friend of mine, a doctor who just moved here from the east, will be here any minute. I'll consider it a great favor if you'll wait and meet him. Will you? Very well. His name is Thatcher, George Thatcher. I think you two have a lot in common. Oh, is that so? He feels the same way about germs, disease germs, as you do about crooks. He can't rest till he's run them down. I'd be glad to meet Dr. Thatcher. At flood tide late the following afternoon, several schooners, brigantines, and clipper ships rode through the Golden Gate. And a short time later, they were tied up with the long pier that jutted out into San Francisco Bay. Sailors, eager for the strange feel of dry land beneath their feet, swarmed down a dozen gangplanks. Come on, kid. Sling that duffel bag across your shoulder and let's go. I, I don't feel very good. And I can't seem to tie this thing so it'll stay. Here, let me see it. <laughs> no wonder you can't tie up your duffel. You're using the granny knot. Who ever heard of a sailor using a granny on a duffel bag? You need a Turk's head. Give me that line. Now watch this. There, all tight and ship shape. There ain't nobody this side of the China Sea that can tie a Turk's head like I can. Yeah. What's the matter, kid? You're kind of pale around the scupper. I told you I didn't feel good. All you need is a drink. Come on, we're heading for the little casino. Mac. Look. Look at what? That hawser line. Maybe it's because it's getting dark, but it looks to me like that hawser's moving. See? <laughs> Say, you do need a drink. That hawser ain't moving. It's just a few of them bilge rats climbing down. 
They want to get ashore, too. <laughs> Come on. That's the way the enemy's army landed. There was no thundering salvo of offshore cannon, no blazing muskets, nor flying lead. Only the deathly scurrying sound of thousands of dirty claws and disease-infested bodies. The invasion had begun. Hey, barkeep, we want a drink. Well, stop yelling. I can't... Mac Barber. So you know my name. Does that stop you from serving a drink? No. No. No, oh, but the boss told me to look out for you. He wants to see you. Yeah? Who's the boss? Bart Craddock. Craddock, eh? All right, but... Mac, I don't think I want any drink. Sure you do. It's just the thing for... Hey, kid, what's the matter? What are you staggering for? You ain't had anything yet. My... My head's spinning. <laughs> How do you like that? My shipmate just looks at a bottle of liquor and he... Uh, he's drunk. I uh, never touched it. I was watching him. He ain't drunk. He's sick. Hey, he can't get a doctor to come down here to the coast. Except maybe that new sawbones that just moved into town. Who's he? A fellow named Thatcher. Send him. Send, send somebody for him. Help me carry the kid back into Bart's office. <laughs> What I mean, Mac? None of the law here in town knows you. It's an easy job anyway. Fix yourself up in some kind of a fancy rig and go to this Tai Sha Shung's house up on DuPont Street. How much gold is there in this heathen idol? I've seen it, and I'll give you odds that it's worth at least ten thousand dollars. Yeah? How'll I carry this? Yeah, uh, it's not very big. You could pack it in your duffel bag. All right, I'll get it. Right in here, Doc. Where's the patient? That's him. Laying on the bench over there. Oh, hi, Doc. You'd better run along, Mac, and get back here as soon as you can. Yeah. Let me know what the sawbone says about the kid. Uh, how does he look, Doc? I guess like most sailors, he couldn't stand dry land. <laughs> He'll be losing his color. I want a few of the glands in his neck. Hmm. Think I ought to mix him a good stiff drink, Doc? This boy's a sailor. How long has he been in town? Oh, about an hour, I guess. What's the difference? Quite a bit. He'll be dead inside of 30 minutes. Dead? Now, what's wrong? The worst thing that could happen to him and to San Francisco. I don't understand. It's plague. Bubonic plague. Everything is in readiness, my fellow. I have arrayed the goddess Kwan Kung in all her celestial splendor. She is most auspicious and inspiring. Now we'll await the bearers who will carry her in the procession. I had hoped the man with the mask and his Indian friend would be here before this time. They will arrive. Never fear. Perhaps that is... I will open the door. Oh, yes, it is. All right, China girl. Put up your hands and don't squawk. What is the meaning of this? He has the gun, father. You too, you old goat. Reach. I shall not allow armed robbers yeah, to... Maybe you'll allow this. <coughs> Stow your jaw or you'll get the same thing. Oh, where's that Chinese idol I've heard so much about? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Unaware of what had happened to their friends, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up their horses in the deep shadows back of Tai Shar Shung's home. Oh, 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 Evidently, the parade has already started, Tonto. Steady, big fella. We'll leave the horses here. Uh-huh. Uh, why Chinese people do this, huh? It's one of their important holidays, the Feast of the Lanterns. We're honored by being invited... Come on, we'll knock at the side door of Taishar Shung's house. That 
strange. I'm sure they're expecting us. Well, the door's not locked. We'll go on in. Hmm. There's no light, and I think... Tai Sha Shung! Tai Sha Shung! Maybe them go watch parade on Main Street. Oh, no. Tai Sha Shung would wait for us, and I... I don't like this, Tonto. Let's look in the next room. Listen. You hear? Make a light, Tonto. Quick. Oh. Me find land. Here. Here. We see now. Tai Sha Shung and his daughter, both bound and gagged. I'll help Mofo Loy. You untie her father, Tonto. Uh, me help him. Oh, thank heaven. I shall be forever grateful. Lola, are you all right? Age withstands all things. But you, my child. I am of no importance. The goddess Kwan Kun, she has been stolen. What happened? We had prepared the celestial image of the goddess. It was to be carried in a ceremonial procession. A few moments ago, an armed man entered the front door. First he struck my father, then me. After he had bound and gagged us, he stole the image of Kwan Kun and fled. Who was this man? What did he look like? He, he wore a mask. I thought at first it was you. And this image he stole? The likeness of Kwan Kun was fashioned in pure gold. Pearls and precious stones were part of her headdress. Hmm. Evidently the robbery was well planned. And if you didn't recognize a man, there's no way for us to... But wait a minute. Taro. Uh-huh. Look at the rope that was used to bind Taisha Shung. Is it knotted in the same way this one is? Ah, uh, that plenty strange. We never see knot like this before. Neither have I. But I know one thing. What do you mean? These are seamen's knots. Only a sailor could tie them. That narrows the field considerably. But there are thousands of seamen in San Francisco. Our job is to find just one of them. A guilty one. Come on, Tonto. Ah. Surely heaven and the goddess Kwan Kun will bless you for... Boy, Faloy. She's fainted. The excitement has been too much for her. I will call a physician at once. Good. Well, my friend and I will return later. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. Me go. My gratitude is boundless. And may heaven guide your search. Adios. Mac. I've got it, Bart. Got it right here in my duffel bag. Yeah. The kid, how is he? He's dead. Well, I'll be dead, because you brought it in here. The doc says there's no telling how far it'll spread, and Wait. we better... What are you gabbing about? The plague. Black plague. It kills you quick. I can't see it. Get out of here. If you don't leave, so help me, I'll blow your head off. Plague. Plague. Maybe I've got it, too. My head feels kind of funny... Well, where'll I go? I, I got no money. I don't care where you go. It's every man for himself now. Well, all Move. Right. All right, but I'm taking this gadget along with me. You can have it. Maybe I'll hunt up that sawbones. What's his name? Thatcher. Doc Thatcher. But it won't do you any good. Maybe both of us are wrong, Bart. We reached for a Chinese idol who got the plague instead. With the lightning swiftness of an unseen forest fire, the invading army of rats moved through Barbary Coast and Chinatown. In its wake came death, desolation, and a single word that brought fear to every human heart. Plague. Doctor, will she... Yes, the crisis has just passed. She'll recover. Thank heaven. The gods have heard my prayers. That's good news, Doctor. I wish it were true in every other case in Chinatown. Yes, so do I. But I'm afraid we're losing more times than we win. What else can be done? Is there any way Tonto and I can help? I don't know how. I'm sure you could do it if there was a way. Arnold Gerson has told me many instances of your courage and bravery. Unfortunately, this enemy can't be seen. The nearest we ever come to him is through sound. Sound? What do you mean, Doctor? I'll show you. This house is no different than a hundred others in Chinatown and Barbary Coast. During the past ten days, they've all become infested and overrun with rats. Listen when I pound on this wall. Here? In my home? They're everywhere. And 
Wherever there's a rat, there are fleas. That's the beginning of bubonic plague. Well, where did they come from? I don't know. Probably from the waterfront and recently dock ships. And they won't stop here. They're moving to all parts of the city. Of course. It is bad enough for our little settlement to suffer this scourge. If it could only be stopped so that other innocent people would not... Or will money help? Arnold Gerson will do everything possible. Money would bring more doctors, but they couldn't get here from the east in time to stop the epidemic. No, gold can't fight the plague. A man walked into my office just three days ago and offered me a whole bag of it to save his life. He was dead within an hour. Do you still have the gold? I really don't know. It's in a canvas sack that's tied so securely I haven't been able to open it. I can't untie the odd-looking knots. Well, that shouldn't be hard unless it... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Look, here's a short piece of rope that I cut from some used by a thief to tie up Taishar Shung almost two weeks ago. Are there knots on the canvas sack like these? Well, yes, they're exactly like that. How did you know? The contents of that canvas bag belongs to Taishar Shung. It's a ceremonial image made of pure gold. What? Do you mean the goddess Kwan I'm sure of it. Hanno and I have searched all over the coast for a man who could tie a knot like this. We never found him. Evidently, you did, Dr. Thatcher. That's a strange coincidence. If the likeness of Kwan Kung has been found, I am sure it is a good omen. I must tell Moy, follow I. I wish his good omen meant the rats were going to die. That's the only thing that will save us. And I guess it's too much to hope for. Maybe not, Doctor. What do you mean? Something I've just thought of. A plan that may or may not work. I'll need Arnold Gerson's help. I'll send Toto with a message tonight. Toto. Well, I didn't expect to see you. Let me bring important note from Lone Ranger. You read it. Of course. Let me see it. All right, Toto. You tell the Lone Ranger I'll try to do what he suggests. I'll go to the city council. I may not be successful, but I'll try. Ah, uh-huh. me tell him. I asked the city council, Tanto, but they wouldn't listen to me. They refused to grant the Lone Ranger permission to help in this emergency. Ah, uh-huh. the Lone Ranger say, if you get answer like that, me ask other question. What is it? Him need 300 cans of blasting powder. You have him in warehouse now, waiting for shipment to mine. 300 cans of blasting powder? What in the world does he want that for? Lone Ranger say Mr. Gerson him plenty smart. Him think, then him know. Hmm. Yes. Yes, I think I understand. But the scheme's fantastic. It can't possibly work. Where we get blasting powder? In my large warehouse near the waterfront. I'll tell the watchman to let you in. Ah, me go now. Tomorrow night, about ten o'clock, you meet Chinese man, Tai Sha Chong, edge of Chinatown. Does the Lone Ranger want me to do that too? Ah, all right, I'll be there. The following day, under the direction of the wise and worthy Tai Sha Chong, hundreds of families were removed from a large central section of Chinatown. And curious people noticed that many Chinese workmen, led by an American Indian, carried countless metal cans into the evacuated area. That evening, a few minutes before 10 o'clock, three men and a young girl met by appointment at the edge of town. Do you think it'll work, Mr. Gerson? I don't know, Thatcher. It's a dangerous job, mighty dangerous. How's he going to do it? Well, I don't know exactly. But I think Tonto has planted the cans of blasting powder in concentric circles and buried it underground. All throughout the area. How can it be ignited? Well, that's the catch. With no long fuses, all I can do is start in the center and light each successive blast as they come out. They can't move fast enough to escape being killed. Well, maybe they can on horseback. It is my humble opinion that anything the mask one attempts, he accomplishes. I hope so. He will do it. I know he will. Taisha Shung, this is as good a time as any for me to offer an apology. Apology... For what, my friend? The Lone Ranger told me I ought to meet you, and as usual, he was right. You and your people are willing to sacrifice your homes and your property to stop the progress of a horrible disease. And, incidentally, to save the rest of the city. It is written that any sacrifice for the sake of humanity 
It's a duty to oneself. Well, all I can say is... I'm proud to be a part of the same America you've chosen to be your adopted home. It is my humble privilege to call you friend. And if the Lone Ranger's idea works, I'll rebuild every home that's destroyed. Gratitude of my people shall be yours forever. Almost 10 o'clock. Oh, I hope it works. There he goes. That's the first one. Come on. It's all over. Come on, let's get down there. I'll bet it scared most of the people in town out of their senses. Better to be frightened than ill with the deadly disease. It's worked. I'm sure it has. Look, there isn't a house standing for over ten square blocks. We're going to have a lot of explaining to the city council, Mr. Gerson. Your report on the plague will be the best explanation. Father, see, this one wall is all that's left of our home. We'll build another, my child. That's right, just one wall. But listen. You see, the rats are no longer there. They've gone. They're dead. And so is the threat of bubonic plague, thanks to the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.